From Dow High School, yet another rivalry matchup. This time the Dow Chargers welcoming in the Midland Chemics to start off their rivalry week between these two crosstown rivals. Chemics coming in, starting it with volleyball tonight, ending the week with football. I'm Riley Edwards alongside Jeff Roberts here from Midland Dow, and boy, it's gonna be a tough one tonight. I think looking on paper, the biggest matchup to look at is these coaches. Two totally different ends of the spectrum. You look at Dow, they have a young coach in Blaha, and then you look at Midland Midland High, on the other hand, 16 years their coach has been there. Yeah, starting with, with Dow's coach, C.J. Blaha, you see it's his first year. He just graduated from Central this past spring in 2018. He actually applied for the JV position originally over the summer, and then the powers that be that gave him the job said, hey, we think that you could take our varsity program and run with it, and he's done a great job with that. You see they sit at 23, eight, and six on the season. They, every time they watch the film, they always see what they can do to get better. They don't try and focus on one or two specific things, and he takes that and they run with it, and they've done a great job this season so far. And we talked to him about his own youth helping in his coaching, and he's got that ability to just jump in and play in practice and kind of form a closer bond with his players. And, you know, he says that's really helped. They really embrace it, and they, they come to him, and they ask him to learn new things after they watch tape every week. Yeah, it's always fun when you have a coach that jumps in with you with that youth factor with you. But on the other side, you have someone that's not so youthful. You have the coach from Midland High School, someone who's been the coach for 16 years here. He's been around the sport for many, many decades. And he's actually coached at different colleges, but he's fallen here in Midland. And he's taken this program and run with it as well. He's won coach of the year in 2007 in the, in the division. And he's done a great job with this program, taking it and keeping it where it is today. Yeah, and as Jeff mentioned, 2007 Saginaw Valley League, Volleyball Coach of the Year, and he's done a fantastic job losing a few seniors from this past season, but really trying to make his way here, especially in a rivalry matchup. He says they're a little green around the outsides, but really working on it, and this should be a really tight matchup tonight. Yep. And really, seniors being recognized on the floor now, and we've mentioned the rivalry. Big student sections from both teams right now. And it's only getting started. I'm sure once this match gets going, the atmosphere is going to be crazy. The atmosphere in here is crazy. They pulled down the second half of the bleachers, and this place is filled in very nicely on the left side. You see you have some Dow fans from home. And Midland High School has traveled very well. They have a whole section filled up for them here as well. Exciting match here today. And we go back to, to Coach Blaha, and that was one of the things we talked to him about before this match was coming in. He had a chance to coach at Chip Hills, a much smaller school. But coming here to Class A, a lot of students to choose from, a bigger, you know, just variety of people coming up to watch these matches, and that's exactly what he loves. The intensity, you know, the bigger schools, the matchups, and this is perfect for him, and this is his first time getting to play in this rivalry. Yeah, and you know, his school sits at 37th in the state, in the division, so they're a very, very good team. Great job he's done here his first season. He's had a lot of players to choose from, like he told us. He just loves the energy. And you know, he also coaches Michigan elite teams. Last year, he coached the 16U team. They asked him to coach the 17 and 14U team here this season. And he's also taken this program, and he's able to pull the girls from the school here, bringing them to their Michigan elite squad. And now we're gonna wrap it up and toss it down to the floor.
A lovely rendition of the national anthem here, sung by, well, Midland Dow's own volleyball player, that is, Chinasa Okoro. And it was beautiful, Jeff, if I don't say so myself. Yeah, it really was. She hit all of her notes nicely. And look at that, she's run back out on the court, ready for team introductions, just like that. Well, the senior outside hitter getting ready to play here tonight, one of her final rivalry games of her career as Midland High is here at Dow High School. There's introductions being made now, and really we talked about it in the pregame, but still moving more towards that first serve. The atmosphere in here, you can tell, it just keeps getting more full by the minute in both student sections. You have to give credit to Midland High, too, for traveling well. Yeah, they really did. They have a whole section filled up. They have a couple sections filled up, up into the upper deck with that bright blue color of Midland High School. And then also, the home team fills up very well. They have a student section overflowing into the regular fan section. They also fill up the stands very, very well. A lot of energy in this gym today. And this should be a very, very good match for this to begin rivalry week for both of these schools. And Jeff, I don't know about you, I know we're not too far removed from high school, but if I was a boy in that student section, I don't know if I'd be wearing one of the girls' volleyball jerseys. I know I certainly wouldn't fit, but <laughs> some brave souls over there putting on some of the pink volleyball jerseys is obviously, we're in October for breast cancer awareness, so also the home crowd supporting that. Yeah, well, wouldn't fit me as well, Riley, but uh, those jerseys must be some from, pa from past games for this team and then wearing them, keeping keeping that breast can cancer awareness month going. A really good support seeing all these guys and even some girls wearing these pink jerseys in support of their team. And this is just the first little taste of rivalry week for both of these teams. Crosstown high schools coming to meet at a one arena this time, Dow. And this is just, as I mentioned, the first taste. They'll end off the week with football on Friday, which is always one of the most anticipated events for both of these high schools every year. And it's really just kind of coming down to it. This is going to start it. The energy is going to raise as they get into their first part of competition. And it's just going to build throughout the week. So I think that even though Dow and High both want to keep winning, but they both have some more on their shoulders to take care of in terms of their school. Yeah, you're right. You know, this rivalry is super, super huge. And you know, in some schools they have rivalry in just one sport or the other, but this school really is very competitive in both sports. You know, you have volleyball and football this week, but continuing to the next seasons, you have wrestling, you have basketball, other huge sports that these schools don't stop at all during the school year. And it's just great to see these two very, very close schools hashing it out all year long, starting with volleyball this season. And both teams taking the floor now. Getting ready for, well, these seniors, one of their last rivalry games going head to head against their crosstown enemies. As both Leveros coming in. Checking in first for Dow is Ainsley Lacey. On the other hand, Sam Ulrich comes in for the Chemex. Levero defensive specialist, the senior. Donning the gold jersey here on the green court for the Chargers. Chemex will serve first. Jillian Krawczak, the junior, outside hitter, gets it away. The set from the right side and a tap. Great dig. The bump, and it'll be sent back over by Sophie Donahue. Aggressive. Midland nails down the kill. And just like that, right from the start, you see number 12, Maya Albright, for the Chemex, doing what she's done all season long. A fantastic kill there, one of her team leaders in kills. And like I said, she's in it all season long, starting early here. Riley Kramer back to serve. Swings with the left hand. Thinking about setting it at the net, she sends it across. That gets out of bounds. All knotted up at one. Very early here, you see how high energy this arena is gonna be. That's only the first two points of this match, and for each of them, the place has gone up in flames. A 
And that'll be an ace for the Chemex. Excuse me, the Chargers as the Chemex on the other hand looks of awe on their face. As I think they may have given that point to the Chemex. So call overturned. And either way, serve goes out of bounds, ball back to Dow. All tied up at two. And Albright, who usually starts off that serving rotation, was back there once again. The serve, this time by Haley Tannis. At the net, putting it over, Jenna Summers. The bump from the front row. Okara. Summers, once again, aggressive from the middle. Probably a good decision by Alyssa Kepner there to just send it over. And once again, an aggressive play by Catherine Perry. Catherine Perry just tips that one over. She sees a hole in the Chargers defense. She tips that one over, gets the third point of the set. The set from the right side, nice dig. Paris Query on the right side. From the back row this time, won't find the floor. And a big kill in a big situation from Chinasa Okoro. Her first kill of the night. We mentioned she sang the national anthem. Now came out from the left side and delivered a thunderous hit. And it's all tied at three. A great set there by her team, and I think that's what set that one up so nicely. She was able to jump right into that one and didn't even touch a Kemic before it hit the floor. And that will be an attack error. They'll overturn the call. Blaha, CJ Blaha, that is not happy on his side as she was talking to the official nearest to him. With the call being overturned, 4-2. Midland high in the lead. Taylor Sanborn, the sophomore, back to serve. Ryan Judge gives her the okay, and the serve is over. Back row, Okara bumps it. Big hit from the back row that goes just too far. Taylor Edie Haas, excuse me, Jeff, the one connecting with that ball. Yeah, Sanborn able to see that one was going to go out and let that one go for the smart play. And the serve goes too far. So just two serves that time for Taylor Sanborn. 5-3. Kamich leading. And instead of being able to set it at the net, big decision. Francesca Query, the last of the Query children coming through the Midland Dow Public Schools. Not just her first kill of the night, the sophomore, older sister, you heard her name earlier, Karis Query, the senior setter for the Chargers. So Lacey will bump, Okara, big hit, and they'll say it's in. So after her first kill was overturned, that's still just her first kill of the night. All knotted up at five here in this first set. Both student sections continue to stand on their feet. Set from the front row. The right touch to the net, Okara. Can't get to it. Edie Haas the credit for the kill. Serve just over the net, and that's an ace. Jillian Krawczak, second kill of the night, and that's an ace. Once again, big hit by Okora. Another kill, and just attacks back and forth, both teams being aggressive. And in talking to Tim Zero before this match, he talked about 
how important it was to pass and serve, and we really haven't seen any faults from Chemex in those areas as a big dig that time by Lacey. Big hit coming off the top of the net. Izzy Velasquez notches her first kill. Izzy Velasquez did a great job there. As you see, she was able to see that front left corner of the court was open. She put that one right along the net where no Kemet could get it. And that's a service error for the Kemex coming off the arm of Krista Moe, the outside hitter. Junior couldn't keep it in bounds. 8-7. Kemex still leading. Moe will bump it. Big hit, just slides in the back of the court. Francesca Query, second kill of the night. Once again, back at square one, tie to eight. Ainsley Lacey, the libero and one of the captains for this Chargers squad. Back to serve, but it doesn't go her way. Just a set over the net, falls in between the defense. A very veteran move there by Riley Kramer. She saw a hole in the bottom of that defense. Instead of using that second hit, she just puts it over the net and it falls. And deception there by Kramer. She had 74 assists in last weekend's tournament. As that point goes to the Chargers. And I bring that up because she was in that front row getting ready to set. Obviously, as I said, the deception, she just decides to set it over the net instead of to one of her teammates and she notches the kill that time. Big hit from the front row and one that probably could have been let go by Krista Moe. But somehow the Chargers figure out how to get it back over. Once again, another scramble. Karis Query able to just set it over and a rocket goes out of bounds. Dow now has the lead, student section erupting 10-9. A very big momentum swing there for the Chargers. Very athletic play there by the libero, able to get that one back into the playing court. It ends up in a point for the Chargers. Karis Query nearly with the ace. Big hit by Maya Albright. And that'll be an illegal touch by the Chargers. Back to 10 apiece. Riley Kramer. Back to serve for the Chemex. The set in the front row, Alyssa Kepner will send it over. Big hit, nice dig from the back row. Krista Moe again as stuffed at the net, the point will go to Midland. Izzy Velasquez just tried to tip that one over in one of the empty spots on the Chemex defense, but didn't get enough power behind it, and that one falls on the top of the net, then back onto the Chargers' side. Kramer will continue to serve, and that's an ace. Mentioned she had 74 assists last weekend during their tournament. Well, she also had six aces, and she decides to keep that going. And what a big spot is that's a two-point lead. And after the ace, She'll notch a service error as well, sending it out. Just a one point, 12-11 lead for Midlands. Velasquez, back to serve, sends it over, back right corner. The bump from the right side, big hit, Velasquez there. Lacey will just send it over. Good set, front row, and Lacey with a dig. Okoro didn't get the angle she wanted on that one and sent it into the net. Thirteen eleven, two point lead hasn't gotten much bigger for the Chemex here in this first set. Sent over by Maya Albright, huge dig, and in the front row. Somehow will be sent over, but it finds the floor. They'll give the point to the Chemex. Catherine Perry, another kill.
this little swing for the Chemex is very important. Such a tight match. You're going to need these little couple of few point swings. And they've done a, done a great job here opening this up by a few points. The set. And out of bounds. Off the hit from Haley Tannis. And that'll be a timeout taken by Midland Dow. 15-11 now. And what a run it has been. And a good timeout called by CJ Blaha. As that was a quick 3-0 run for the Chemex. And obviously audience here playing a role tonight on the court. And you know, a lot of errors we didn't think we'd see Dow make. And as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast talking to, to Tim Zarrell, they've served and they've passed. And they haven't messed those things up. And right now it's in their favor. Yeah, you're right. On the road here, having a student section that's bigger, not many, have, having fans on the Dow side bigger than them, they're being just as loud and, and just as present in this gym. That's making it kind of seem even here. And they've got this four-point lead early in this match. It, it's a great big momentum swing in this rivalry for the Chemex. You know, Coach Zero's done a great job at, you know, keeping them, keeping them passing and their serves great. have a couple aces here early and they got the lead that shows it. Coming out of the timeout, Maya Albright will continue to serve. From the front row, Tannis will get the kill. That breaks the 3-0 spurt by the Chemex. And now moving back to serve is Tannis. The junior recovered from a concussion, came back on October 2nd when they played Bay City Central, whom they swept. Sat from the front row to the right. Big kill. Melissa Kepner notches her first. The junior from the right side. 15-13 now. Serve from Tannis. The dig now from the front row. Catherine Perry tried to. That's a big swing in the front row. Francesca Query. And I think that went off the head of Liv Carpenter. Just a one point lead, 15-14. Nice dig by Tannis from the back row. Velazquez sends it over. Off the hands of the front row and out of bounds. That will end a quick three nothing run for the Chargers. Back to a two point lead, 16-14. And a good move up front. Edie Haas, second kill of the night. As she saw that Alyssa Kepner in the front row wasn't being too aggressive, so she decided to put it back down to the floor herself. Dig in the back row by Lacey. Okoro will keep it in bounds, but they won't have enough hits to do it. That one there started with a bad set from Ainsley Lacey. When, the, when she went for the return, it hit off her forearms and went backwards. And that one set that one up bad. Nakora wasn't able to recover, and that one falls on their side. Biggest lead of the match so far for the Chemex, 18-14. And it's been a game of streaks so far. There's a 3-0 run by the Chemex. Timeout, CJ Blaha and the Chargers. Then they go on a 3-0 run. Then the Chemex stop that and go on another 3 nothing run of their own. One of my favorite things to see here is Coach C.J. Blaha, he's right in that huddle with his team, arm around his girls saying that we are in this together and we can get back into this at home in their own arena. Like he was saying, he gets in and gets, in, gets to play with his team during practice. And that just shows the type of energy this team has and the type of chemistry they have. Taylor Sanborn back at the service stripe after the timeout, 18-14, Midland leading Midland Dow. Set from the front row, Okoro, big swing, big kill. Once again, after coming out of a timeout, 
Midland Dow finds a way to score. Going back to serve now, Melissa Kepner. That's a Coro's third kill of the night. As great court vision. Knew there was a spot in the back left corner. And Catherine Perry keeps doing her job for the Chemex. Catherine Perry there. Wasn't the most hard hit ball off her hand, but that one went where it needed to go, strategically placed for the point for the Chemex. That was her 337th kill on the season for the Chemex. As Okoro saves it, sent over by Velasquez, and a miss hit by Maya Albright. Out of bounds, point. Goes to the Chargers. Still a three point lead for the Chemex, though, 19 16. Here in enemy territory for Midland. Although they brought a good crowd of their own. To set. Once again to Perry. And she'll notch another. Fourth of the ninth. Last weekend in total. Had 24 at their tournament. Four point lead for the Chemex. Perry with the dig, and Haas sent it over the net. The left side, Velazquez, a nice attempt, but not able to keep it in bounds. Catherine Perry did all she could. Velazquez, that's just her second kill so far of the night. And the serve from Ainsley Lacey. Doesn't get over. Service errors have become a problem tonight for the Chargers. They're now in danger of losing this first set here at home. The set to the left side. Tannis sends it too far. And something I've noticed, Jeff, throughout this first set is it's really just been attack errors and service errors from the Chargers that have given this big lead to the Chemex. As finally, something goes their way. The serve from Haas goes out of bounds. Now it's 22-18. But you're right, Riley. They have made some errors against the Chemex that give, have given Midland High this lead. You know, both teams started very, very well, even up to eight points. But then, then the Chargers started making mistakes, and that's why they're trailing in this first set. Point goes to the Chargers now. It's a three-point lead for the Chemex. Karis Query with the serve from the right side. Albright taps it, and it finds the floor. Just two more points, and the Chemex will have the first set in the bag. Just like that rally has been the story of the first set. You see the Chemex go on a run. The Chargers try and come back with a one or two point swing with getting the momentum in the arena. But then the Chemex come right back, score a point, and then usually go on their own one or two point swing. Riley Kramer to serve. She already has one ace today. Didn't get one that time. Right side, big touch at the net, but some miscommunication. Strong play up front by Alyssa Kepner. But Haley Tannis had no clue where the ball went. And coming diving across was Velazquez. And now just one more point for Midland High to wrap up this first set. And there it is. 25-19 victory for the UA team. Big rivalry match here from Dow. The Chemex takes set one. And that's big going forward into the rest of this match. You always want to be able to take that first one, and as well as the Chemex played, they didn't make any mistakes of their own. Dow really shot themselves in the foot in that one between the service errors, the attack errors, maybe being a bit too aggressive coming out in a big matchup at home. Yeah, you're right. You know, one thing I've noticed is that the miscues they've had in receiving the Chemex serves and things like that, they're trying to set it and bump it but it just goes off to the side and then it ha causes all of them to run towards the ball and that's just not what you need. They're not playing clean volleyball and that's why 
they lost that first set. The Chemics have really calmed down. They've done a great job with passing, like Coach said that they always do in practice. And the Chargers aren't doing a good job with that. You also have to give credit to the Chemex student section at the end of that match, especially when it was 24-19. The only thing you could hear in this arena was one more point. They chanted that. They got the point. They take the first set. They lead 1-0 here in the first of three. Well, assuming that the Chemex don't take the second one, the best of three, I should say, as Midland High came out and I think really defeated our expectations early on. We saw what happened last year. Obviously, the Chemex coming out on top, but they graduated three seniors from such a good team. One team that won a district and regional title, and a few players going off to play some D2 volleyball. And that's hurt this Chemex team, but they put that aside tonight, came out, and showed what they can truly do. Yeah, you're right. You know, having that win from last year, they've had the bragging rights all season long, and the expectations coming into this one is that they've lost some players, they might not be as good this season, but they've really come out and shown that they don't make mistakes. They're not gonna shoot themselves in the foot like the Chargers did during that first set. The Chargers need to come back, they need to calm down, they need to take the advice from their first year head coach and just play the game with the chemistry that they know how to do and the fun that they have. The Kimex have come out, shown that they're are, they're not going to back down because they're away. They're really coming and ready to play, and the Chargers need to defend their home court. Team switching sides here, breaking huddles, getting ready to start this second set here from H.H. Dow High School. Teams talking amongst themselves as the clock counts down from 40 seconds. Riley Edwards alongside Jeff Roberts, bringing you some Saginaw Valley League volleyball between the Midland High Chemex and the Midland Dow Chargers. Both teams substituting in their liberos. It's Ainsley Lacey for the Chargers, Sam Ulrich for the Chemex. Ball's back behind the service line and ready to go. It's Riley Kramer. Already has one ace today. The set at the net. The last catch denied. Maya Albright in the front row. We know how much she means to this team offensively, but showing up big on the defense with the block. Quick hit at the net. And the set over by Kramer, saved in the back row by Mo. In the back row, Perry will send it over. Set, Tannis lets it fall. They'll say it touched the line. Point goes to the Chargers. Tied at one early in this second set. Karis Query back to serve, sends it over. And that lands out of bounds. Similar play to what the Chargers just had, but that time for Albright, she can't get the kill. Had 34 kills and five aces in the tournament in Jenison last weekend. The set, the hit across, but it hits the antenna. One point, once again, goes to the Chargers. Just like that, after a troubling first set by the Chargers, they've come out, they lost the first point, then came back with a three-point swing, and it feels like they have the momentum at their home court. Nice dig. Back row, Lacey sends it forward, and Velasquez will get it across. Albright. Velasquez, back row. Nice dig by the libero Ulrich. Lacey, the set to the right side. Kepner not able to get the kill. The set this time to Tannis, who pulls a quick one and just shoves it over. After an 0-1 start by High, it's a 4-0 run for the Chargers. 
Set from Kramer in the front row to Sanborn. Set, Velazquez off the front row. It's touched to the net and out of bounds. Five nothing run now for the Dow. Wouldn't be surprised before too long if this run keeps going that Tim Zero, 16th year head coach for the Chemex, might take a timeout. And Albright can't keep it in either. And as the Chargers were making so many errors in the first set, now the Chemex can't even keep the ball in bounds. Yeah, you're right. I don't think their attack plan is any different than it was in the first set for the Chemex. But in the second set, we see that the Chargers aren't making those mistakes. That first point, we saw that the point was blocked by the Chemex. But since then, the Chargers have been playing very, very clean volleyball. And that shows in the points now that it's 6-1 six to, six to one in this second set. And I'm sure that Tim Zarrell is telling his team what they need to do better is just continue to play their game of volleyball. The passes and the serves. On the other hand, CJ Blaha in with his team huddle all again, telling them that they got this. They have the momentum swing right now. Their student section singing along to the song. They just got to keep this swing and continue the second set. And I think you can really take away from that that the errors have been coming off attacks. There hasn't been much passing and, and much serving, really, for the Chemex. On this 6-0 run for the Chargers, it's been Kyrus Query back there to serve the entire time. Trying to keep it in bounds. Ulrich will keep it in for Perry, who sends it over. And another quick, quick, quick kill, excuse me. The second for Tannis in the second set. And as I mentioned, Karis Query, the senior center, will continue to serve. 7-1 lead for Dow. Big hit from the front row, and the kill goes to Velazquez. Just absolutely pelted by Albright. That was a statement kill there for the Chargers. Already up 7-1 on a seven-point swing. Wonderful set there by the Chargers and just pounds that one into Albright and it hits off of her for the kill for the Chargers. And there was nothing Velazquez could do other than just watch that ball fly off of Albright in the front row. Set by Kramer across to Liv Carpenter who's rejected. Points just keep flowing Midland Dow's way. That's a 9-0 run now, a 9-1 lead. And a few of those points early in this set were long volleys back and forth. But over these last several, they've been very, very quick points, just like that one for the Chargers, having all the momentum here. And that is so important in a high-energy rivalry game like this. Karis Query with the ace, the oldest Query sister on this team. Francesca, the sophomore plays as well. Francesca will be the last query child to come through the Midland Dow High School. Sanborn, too much into it. Just keeps it going. An 11-0 run now. It might not even be a bad idea for the Chemex to take yet another timeout. Query still serving. The set by Kramer. Albright sends it out. 12 to 1 lead. An entirely different set here in the second than we saw in the first. And indeed, we will see another timeout by Midland. At the end of that point, I noticed that a lot of the Chemex players looked over at Coach Tim Zero saying, what do we do now? All the momentum is in, in the Chargers' favor. They're down 12 to 1 in the second set. And they're trying to attack like they had in the first set, but the Chargers aren't making the mistakes that they they did, and so leaders like Maya Albright looking at her coach saying, Coach, what do we do? He was forced to take a timeout like you had mentioned. And we saw Albright put one out of bounds for the side out there, and that's been a problem for us this season. She leads this team in attack errors. She's only second in attacks, second in kills, but attack errors, she leads the team with 83. 
And the next closest in attack errors is Catherine Perry, and she only has 51, and also leads the team with 334 kills coming into this match. So a very different game so far we've seen from Maya Albright. I think that just shows her aggressiveness level. The senior knows that she's one of the better volleyball players on this team, and a leader on this team really attacks the opponent. Second ace for Karis Query, her third kill. 13 to one now, the first timeout couldn't stop the run. And coming out of the second timeout here in the second set, doesn't look like they're slowing down. Kramer will set in the front row, Albright rejected. The block, left side by Velazquez. Also had some help by Kepner to her right. Fourteen one query to serve again. Set by Kramer. Not a great set, but a good dig by Lacey. Left side, Velazquez. It's saved by Perry. Mo with the dig. Lacey will keep it in, and Velazquez will send it over, but just out. That ends a 14-0 run for the Chargers. And that was a great volley back and forth. Some mistakes were made, but they were made up by the teams, and that one went back and forth, just fell the Chemex way. Albright to serve. The set by Query. And it's Velazquez again. Coming up with her fifth point of the match. Here the second set. Chemex one, set one. 25-19. And it has been a second match to forget for the Chemex as well. Set by Kramer. Perry caught in a weird position. Lacey sends it over, Okoro, strong hit, but just out of bounds. Just the third point of the match for the Chemex, and it's on an attack error by the Chargers. And having someone with such a strong arm like Okoro can be a blessing and a curse, someone who can get it to the floor real fast on a kill, but then also can send it out of bounds, losing a point for your team like she did there. Good job getting it back over the net by the Chargers. Perry from the middle, dug out by Query. Lacey will bump, Okoro sends it across and to the court. 16-3 lead now for the Chargers in the court vision. From Chinasa Okoro, the senior, finding once again across the court. Just like I had come off in that last break of a point, Okoro Used her strong arm there to push that one along the net and found some empty space on the floor. Perry sends it hard, but they'll say it touched Query before it went out of bounds. It's a side out. 16-4 now. Chemex have to start getting something going now. Only nine more points. That's what the Chargers need to wrap up this second set. Strong serve by Jillian, Jillian Krawczak as Okoro sends it off the net and off the front row, apparently. I don't think the student section for the Chemex agreed with that call, but the point will go to the Chargers. They now have a 17-4 lead here in the second set. Laura Hershauer, the junior setter, back to serve. Getting some help from her front row. The sophomore, we've talked about her sister all night long, but this time, Francesca Query. Kramer will bump it back over. Perry. Sends it across, a set by Karis Query. And Francesca is rejected at the net. 18-5, the lead for the Chargers. Ellie Penn now coming in for CJ Blaha. Defensive specialist 
as the junior goes right to it on the defensive side of things with the dig. Velasquez, strong hit, set by Kramer, Albright. We'll send it back over. Great dig by Perry in the back row. As once again, the defensive specialist showing patience. Comes in, makes a diving play, but has enough control to pull back and watch that one go out of bounds. 19-5 here in the second set, and once again, we'll have a substitution. As Chinase Okoro will come out, coming in, Krista Moe. The serve by Moe. Set by Kramer, and off the front row, the quiet Albright gets just her third kill of the night. Albright does there what she's been doing all season. She was set up very, very nicely by her teammate and came and swung at that one, hit off the side of the hand of a charger, for resulting in a point for the Chemex. A missile sent across. Izzy Velazquez, one of the players that CJ Blaha has one of the closer relationships with, was able to coach Velazquez before coming here as a coach. And now gets to kind of work on that relationship as the serve goes into the back of the net. But one of the players that Blaha can really trust on this Chargers team, and she shows up night in, night out, and she has six kills in these first two sets so far. That was the first time as the Chargers down it, making it 21-20, excuse me, 21-7. But that was the first time tonight that, or in this second set, I should say, that the Chemex have put back-to-back -back points together, scoring six and seven in back-to-back -back serves. Set by Kramer. And almost a punch there from the front row as Sanborn looks kind of out of place, just decides to bop it over. Something like that where she punches that over is a very veteran move and only for a sophomore. That's very, very impressive that Coach Tim Zero has in such a young player being so mindful and thinking of plays like that. That ball won't be able to make it back over. Albright will continue serving. Once again, Kamix putting back-to-back -to -back points together, 21-9 to now. And that luckily will stay in for Velazquez. Her seventh kill of the night. 22-9 now. Chargers trying to send this to a third and final set. You know, back to what you were saying a few points ago, Izzy Velazquez, someone who has played for Coach CJ before, it is so important when your coach, your new coach, has someone on the team that can kind of vouch for him and say, hey, listen, this person is for real. This coach can lead us and do very well for us. And exactly with that, a point for the Chargers again, 23 to nine in this second set. And that ball must have hit the back line, as that's what the line judge says, although the line judges tonight looks like our players from the JV squad. So a nasty look coming from the Midland side as Velasquez will give it a big jump serve over the net. As a big dig by the Chemex. Query will set. Right side. Will be kept up by Perry. The Sanborn will be dug out. Velazquez will send it out. 23-10 now. Sanborn will send the serve too far. Just one more point for the Chargers to take the second set. And as we heard the Chemex crowd say one more point, this time it's the Chargers. As Tannis will serve, nearly an ace sent back over. 
The set by Query. And that'll end up going out of bounds. Query to Query. Sent over the net and not able to be put back over by the Chemex. And that's a 25-10 dominating statement in set two. And that set ended, Riley, kind of like the whole, the whole set went. You know, one of the Query sisters sent that one over, hits off one of the Chemex players and just goes backwards. That kind of was a statement point just to show how the set had gone for the Chemex. But one thing if you notice that I really liked from the Chemex fans is that every one of those 10 points they had, no matter how far they were behind, whether it was by 15 or 10 points, the Chemex fans were excited as if they were winning by five or 10 points themselves. And that just shows how well the Chemex fans have traveled here to Dow. And this is what rivalry, rivalry week is all about. Tied at one set apiece, going to the third and final set. First to 15, you have to win by two. And it's crunch time. Both teams here join a little music as they're just jumping around. As I'm trying to make it a little bit more serious, but you know, this is what high school sports is about, having fun with it. As we talked to CJ Blaha about before is his team down here swaying, talking a little volleyball we can see, but mostly enjoying it. But really, it, this is one of the biggest sets and could be some of the biggest set of the senior's career for the Chargers. Yeah, you're right. You know, looking down at this Chargers huddle, you see a, a, some, of the, some of the seniors, you see number 14, Karis Query, she's bopping her head to the song. Even Coach Blah, he's bopping his head to the song. He knows that this is a very, very, important set to decide who's going to win the year and have the bragging rights for the year but doesn't want his team to forget that this is this is fun they they this is high school volleyball that it means a lot but they, it's a lot of fun you know and so coach cj is put telling his team to keep having fun dancing on the court over there and just see if that one could if this match can fall their way sweet caroline still blasting through the speakers as the Chargers are on the court, Chemex still in their huddle. Very serious speech being given by Tim Zeros. I'm sure he wasn't pleased with what he saw in the second set. Wants to return to that form of set one where they won 25-19. Just a moment ago, Chargers take set two, 25-10. And they got out to a big 14-1 lead and never looked back. They went on a 14 to nothing run after the Chemex scored that first point of that set. Clock, 20 seconds left and the beginning of rivalry week is about to be decided. Set three, right along myself, Riley Edwards and Jeff Roberts here from HH Dow High School. And who else to be back and serve besides Karis Query? She stayed back there for so long before, trying to see if she can start out set three the same way. And she starts it with an ace. A bit of help that time by Catherine Perry, who you usually don't see make those errors. And somehow getting it over Sanborn. From the left side, Velazquez, the set by Kramer. Query, Tannis keeps it in the air, and they won't have enough to go over. Trading paint to start. This second, or this third and final set. As a quick substitution, Julian Krawczak being taken out. Coming back in, Liv Carpenter. Outside hitter has spent a lot of time in the front row tonight. As Tannis nearly rejected, the net is her friend that time. As it bounced right off it and backfired on the Kamek, and the Kemix, excuse me. 2-1 lead for the Chargers. After that one went across the net for Tannis, you saw her kind of pump her fist and have a little sigh of relief there, knowing that every point in this set to 15 is very, very important in this rivalry. 
Carpenter blocks Tanis again. Giving her team a two point lead. Velazquez will continue to serve. She's definitely got some mustard behind it. She uses everything she's got to send it over. Set by Query and she'll just send it over instead. Dig by Lacey, set by Query. And Okoro will send it over but it touches the antenna. That ends a little three nothing spurt for the Chargers. Maya Albright will serve and formation was not right for the Chargers so the point will be awarded to the Chemex. All tied up again, second time we've been tied here in this third set. Remember, just a 15. Coro with the dig, the set by Query. Tannis will find the floor. Tannis will serve, sends it across. Ulrich will dig it out. And there's a kill by the Chemex. They'll say it was touched at the net. We'll just keep racking up the ties. Our third so far, this third set. Sanborn will get an ace. Trying to play a bit conservatively. Ainsley Lacey let it fly by, but it died just in time to stay in. Sanborn will continue to serve as this time it does fly out of bounds. And it'll tie it up again. Five apiece here from Dow High School. It's about as close as it can get. Laura Hershauer will serve again. It's the only time we've seen her in this match so far as her shower will be beat in the back row another lead change 6-5 Chemex jump out to the lead first lead they ha they've had since the first point of set two and that will just be miss hit is Ainsley Lacey tried to dig it out in the back row. Couldn't keep it in bounds. And this is the biggest the lead has been for either team here in this third set. Just two points. As Velazquez rejected. Catherine Perry standing tall in the front row. As the Chemex student section getting loud. And that's so important coming down the stretch here in the third set. A play like Kath and Perry, they're able to block that one. Just like Coach, excuse me, Tim Zarrell said to us before the game that the seniors are the glue that really hold this team together and their performance is super, super important in their second or third year of this rivalry, knowing how important this is. The seniors play really, really lead this Chemex team. And a very unfortunate turn of events there for the Chargers as they let the Chemex go on a bit of a run. But Ainsley Lacey, a couple mid miss hits in the back row right before that timeout, taking the last one off the chest. Not exactly how she wanted it to happen. And now it's a four point lead for the Chemex, 9 5. And Chargers are in danger of losing this match to their arch rival at home. And you're right, you know, the Chemex have been on a smaller run here, was set at five to five, four point run here. And if you look at this game, it's been a game of runs. The first set started tied up to eight, then the Chemex went on a run and never looked back. In the second set, 
Kemmicks got that first point, and the Chargers went on a 6-0 run, never looked back. And here you see the Kemmicks putting up a four-point run. Now four points up, only six points left till they take the match. The set from query to query makes it to the back row of the Kemmicks. Kramer will send it over. The set across to Okoro. Great dig by Albright. Okoro. And somehow being kept in the air. The set. To the back row. Query will send it to Okoro, who drills it down, and the dig nearly scores it for the Chemex. And that's off the ceiling. And once again, unfortunate for the Chargers. No one can anticipate that changing direction that quickly. And it's a five point lead for the Chemex. And that one all was because senior libero Sam Ulrich, she dug that one. Her fists were on the ground when she dug that up, went back over the net and resulted in a point for the Chemex. Okora, once again, a sneaky hit from the outside, but sniffed out by Midland. Francesca Cleary sends it over. And a great dig by Velazquez. Back row. Dig by Ellie Penn. And there's the kill. Still just a four point match. But a, some serious ground to make up for Dow here in the third set. Mo to serve. Set by Kramer. Right side, Perry. Dug out by Lacey. Lasquez can't keep it in. Point will go to the Chemex. Just like we saw in the first set, Riley, the Chargers shot themselves in the foot, which gave the Chemex a lot of points just like that. Query, a bad set. That one caused Velasquez unable to get that over the net. And a big hit, and I think that one might have gone the Chemex way if Catherine Perry didn't try to dig it. But it'll make it 11 to 7, Midland still leading. Francesca Query, back to serve. Set by Kramer in the front row to Albright, who taps it over, and a great dig by Ellie Penn. Velasquez with the putback from the net. It's getting closer. Just three points. 11-8, Chemex lead. Big serve by Francesca Query. The dig. And a big smash into the floor. Another kill for Maya Albright. Main source, or one of the main sources of offense for the Chemex this season, coming up big late in this match. Just three more points would do it for the Chemex. Query the set in the front row. Velazquez sends a rocket that deflects back at her. 13-8. Two more points. Edie Haas with the serve. The set. Tannis. There's some dispute. And they'll say it's out. The serve. The set to Velazquez. Set by Kramer, Albright. Will be bumped by Lacey. Velasquez trying to keep the hopes alive for the Chargers. It's dug out and out of bounds. And that'll do it. Excuse me, that's a timeout. 15-8.
the lead for the Chemex. As both teams huddling around their coaches and Chemex in a very good spot right now, 15-8. Looks like here this third set won't be going to only 15. Looks like they'll take it all the way to 25 to see who will be crowned Crosstown champ this year in volleyball. My apologies for that. As I thought I re read in the rule book for the MHSA that the third set goes to 15. I must have been mistaken. Both teams will take the court now. And continuing to serve will be Edie Haas. He's been doing a great job for the Chemex tonight behind the service strike. At the 15 to eight lead, she sends it away. To the front row, Velasquez off the net and out of bounds. And it's been another good run for the Chemex. Five nothing run. And as I say that, Haas sends it into the net. 16-9, still the lead for Midland. Karis Query sends it across. Big dig, but it'll go out of bounds. Great effort that time by Jillian Krawczak. Haven't seen much of her besides serving. And she makes a good dig there, but it just flies out of bounds. This late in the match, you really need to control those digs. She kind of just dug at that one, not really having control with it, and sends that one over the net and out of bounds, resulting in a point for the Chargers late in this match. It's a big hit by Velasquez, who will find the floor, not after deflecting off of many defenders. 16-11 now the lead for the Chemex. Big hit by Sanborn, rejected. Tanis with the block. That's been the story of the last two sets for the Chargers. The first set, the junior Tannis, kind of quiet. In the last set, she's able to get a, several kills, several blocks, and just like that one, able in this little momentum swing for the Chargers, a big block resulting in a timeout that Tim Zero is forced to take. Both teams once again in their huddles as the student section for the Chargers saying, we ain't done yet. And on the other hand, Chemex student section just dancing, obviously. Good reasons for both of those actions. But 16-12, just a four point set still. And it could still be anybody's ball game. But the Chemex have been very impressive here in this third set. You know, letting the Chargers score some points, but really keeping control of that lead. Yeah, you know, it's been a very, very overall clean match from both teams. There has been some mistakes for either back and forth, but a lot of good kills, a lot of good blocks. Very, very well coached by C.J. Blaha and Tim Zarrell. The hit by Albright will be dug out by Lacey. Tannis will send it over quickly and finds the floor. She had no intentions there of that ball being a point, but it does, falls right in the middle of the Chemex defense. Just a three point set. Karras, query with the serve. Albright sends it to the back row, dug out by Mo. The set, Kepner will send it across. Perry will have to send it back. Tannis, the light tap. The dig will go out of bounds. And just like that, two points between these teams. A couple timeouts ago, we were sitting at a 15 to eight Chemex lead in this third set. And just like that, with momentum swings being at home, the Chargers have fought their way back slowly and now only trail by two points. And there's a pineapple. The set from the front row. Karis Query, she's done it a few times tonight, but that time it works. 
One point separating Zhao and Hai. Kramer with the set. Good touch of the front row for the Chargers. Velazquez, strong hit to the back row. And there's a set that nearly comes down. Velazquez will miss as Tannis was tangled up with her. Velazquez, very, a very, very big mistake by Velazquez. She, that could have been an easy tip over the net, but that one kind of tips off her fingers and goes straight into the ground, resulting in a point, a very, very important point late stopping their run in this third set. The set to Tannis. She sends it out of bounds. So after a nice little run for the Chargers, they find themselves down by three again. Early celebration from Tannis there. She kind of hit that one and turned, started to turn around, but then turned around, saw the whistle, and the point wasn't her way. It was a 7-0 run for the Chargers, made it 15-16. Now a quick little spurt for the Chemics that's stopped by an illegal touch. 16-18 here in the third set. And that's an ace for Velazquez. The Chargers click their heels. It's within one. Velasquez has a remarkably strong serve. Like I said multiple times, she puts her entire body into it on the jump serve. Great dig by Lacey, kept in the air by Query, sent over by Velasquez. And once again, a strong, accurate hit from Maya Albright. Again, a senior for the Chemex. Stopping a run by the Chargers, a couple point swing by the Chargers there. Someone that has really had very, very good controlled kills in this game. And she's starting that again in this third set when it matters. Big hit by Perry, she's rejected in the front row. And Tannis, again, with the block, keeping it within one. She'll move back to serve. We've seen her a few times behind the service strike tonight. Dig by Albright, the set to Perry in the front row. Okoro will send it over, and Albright can't dig that out. And it's time. Okoro's been kind of quiet since that first set. A couple kills in the second. But in this third, she hasn't done much. But she's scoring when she needs to. Her team down, finally tied again since early in this set when it was 5-5. Five to five. Now, tie game. Only six, point rem six points remain until the end of the set. Only five now with that block by Okoro. That's... The Chargers' first lead since 4-3 to three at the beginning of this third set. Been tied five times. Make that six. Crazy third set. Here from H.H. Dow High School. Velasquez will have to get this over, and she does. Set by Kramer. Dig by Lacey. And Kepler can't keep it in bounds. So another lead for the Chemex here late in this third set. 21-20. Edlin High in the lead. A set for Kepner trying to get a revenge after heading it out of bounds, and she does. The dig was too strong, flew out of bounds itself. We're tied again. Seventh time this match we've been knotted up. And it's a loud one. Riley Edwards alongside Jeff Roberts. Tied up between Midland Dow and Midland High. But not for long. High takes the lead, 22-21 on the service error by the Chargers. 
Substitutions for the Chemex. Liv Carpenter will take a seat. Now coming in to serve is Jill Jillian Krawczak. Lacey will bump it across to Okoro, who has to bump it over herself. Set by Kramer, and Perry rejected in the front row. Back and forth. The Chemex can't decide if they want to lead or not. We got to an early one in this third set. We're up 15 to eight, like I had mentioned. But the Chargers fought their way back. Now tied 22 here, third set to 25. You have to win by two in these sets. And that was out. Dow now leads, and it's a timeout for the Chemics. Tim Zero will take one late in this third set. 23-22, Chargers who were trailing most of this third set, find themselves in the lead late. As, as loud as it was during play, obviously the music loud, but both student sections have quieted down. Maybe some nail-biting situations for both sides. What's so impressive here is that these student sections have filled up since the beginning, and they have not wavered at all. Both student sections filled up, giving a lot of good, good loud cheering for either team, kind of making it seem like it's a neutral site here even though we are in Dow High School. Kind of seems like a neutral site, like I had said. The Dow, the Dow students just as loud. You have the Midland students who are being just as loud as the Dow students. And it's a very, very good match coming down to the wire here at H.H. Dow High School. Coming out of the timeout, serving for the Chargers is Kristen Moe. The junior is an outside hitter and quickly gets to work. From the outside, Perry dug out by Penn and just pushed over by Query. The Query sisters in the front row making a brick wall. The sophomore Query, the younger one, she's the one who made the big block there in one of her biggest plays of this match. The sophomore, very young in her first rivalry match of her career. A huge block, now only one point away for the win. Off the front row. Query will set it to her sister Francesca, who's rejected. 24-23. We can feel the vibrations up here on the second floor. Catherine Perry back to serve. Sends it over, dug out by Lacey. Nearly an ace. As a huge hit for Velazquez, finds the floor. Midland Dow takes the third set, 25-23. And just like when Izzy Velasquez is doing all game long, she's made some mistakes and she's made some air. She's made some errors and she's made good plays. She made a play when she needed to. Team switching sides. As Dow now takes a two to one lead in the match over their rival Midland High Chemex. And as you mentioned, students have shown up, they haven't left. If anything, more people have shown up. There's two and a half minutes up on the clock, teams switching sides, strategizing as veteran coach Tim Zero walking to his huddle. And first year head coach, C.J. Blaha in his huddle. And after two, very, or really three for that matter, very intense sets here from Dow. It's a crazy night and a great atmosphere. Obviously, rivalry matches in high school are something to get very excited about, but both these schools have embraced it. Both these coaches have embraced it. They don't forget about the level they're playing at and the role they're playing in these student athletes' lives. They both realize that they want to win. They want to win these big matches, but it's very important to have some fun. Yeah, you're right. In both of these teams, it is a rivalry match, and the students can say it, the students can act like it, but these teams are playing like it. 
the match has been very, very back and forth, and though it is two to one Dow on top of the Chemex, it's a very, very even match. The Chemex are playing very well. Both teams are making mistakes, but they're coming back from those mistakes, and they're playing good, quality, clean volleyball. And it seems it's a very, very even match thus far. As it quiets down a little bit, as party in the USA playing through the speakers. Here from HH Dow High School, Riley Edwards alongside Jeff Roberts, bringing you all the action between the Chemics and the Chargers tonight. I mentioned it's the beginning of a big week for both these schools. They had a they go head to head, excuse me, in football on Friday. And that's always a big matchup, especially in the Saginaw Valley League that has some very good football this season, including the 8-0 Mount Pleasant Oilers. We also have Davison on the other side of the conference. That's 7-1 after they lost to Warren De La Salle. Also have to give credit to Fran Blank. Chargers not doing too bad themselves. But both teams heading back to the court. Kamix trying to avoid elimination. They'll start out. Riley Kramer serving. She'll send it over. Penn will dig. Velazquez, strong hit, dug out by Ulrich. Sanborn, dug out by Moe. And Moe will just have to send it over, and it's too strong. That one, a great effort by Moe there. Lays out for that one, but just over, over the out-of-bounds line, resulting in the first point for the Chemex of this fourth set. And there's another point from the Chemex. Starting off 0-2. Kramer continues to serve. And that'll be an ace. Three nothing lead for the Chemex early. Kramer sends it over again. And another miss hit, another ace, and another point. Early in this fourth set kind of reminds us what we saw in the first set. The Chemex came out, they was, it was even to start, but the Chargers ended up making some mistakes, and the Chargers are making mistakes early here in this fourth set, resulting in a swing from the Chemex. The set by Query, Tannis sends it over, and will come back their way off the hands of Liv Carpenter. Big hit by Velazquez, and that ends a 4-0 run. Even with that point, it's still a three-point lead for the Chemex here early in this fourth set. Pushed back over by Sanborn, set by Query. To Kepner behind her. And off the hands of Tannis, that's a kill for Catherine Perry. The senior for the Chemex has been huge this match. She doesn't have the most kills, doesn't have the most blocks, but she's doing a great job setting up her teammates, and then when she needs to, she's scoring those points for her team. The set across, and Kepner won't be able to get it over. Six to one lead for the Chemex. At the net, and there's nothing that Query could do about that one. She fell to her knees, tried to bring it back up, but it falls to the floor, and it's a seven to one lead. Set across to Kepner off the front row, and it drops. So a four-point run, then a three-point run, 
Find ourselves seven to two, Kemmick's up. Chargers need to stop the bleeding and that's not gonna help. There's another ace. Nine two. There's a timeout from Dow. I'd like to remind you that you're watching this Midland High versus HH Dow volleyball game on the MCTV network. MCTV can be found on Charter Spectrum channels 188 through 191 in Midland. You can also find MCTV under channel 99 on at and UVerse. Check out MCT's website at cityofmidlandmi.gov forward slash MCTV for playback dates and times. More replay dates and times to follow on MPS TV 190. View this program online at the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel. Along with that, Ryan, the coverage of this Midland Excuse me, wrong read there. That one's for the football game next week. But here, back here, we see the Chemics are back on the floor. The teams are breaking their huddles. The Nine, Chemics, excuse so, me, sorry, Jeff. Riley. 9-2 lead for the Chemics, coming out of the timeout. And the serve goes out of bounds. Chargers needed something like that. It's now 9-3. They haven't been able to push across much of their own. Tannis back to serve. She sends it over strong. And they'll say it goes out. Tannis has several serve errors in this match. She has some that has gone straight into the net, some that she swung at a little bit too hard, just like that one going out, out of bounds, excuse me, resulting in a point for the Chemex. That one bounced twice off of Lacey. It doesn't matter because it goes into the net from Francesca Query. But Lacey went to dig that out. It went off her arms and also hit her face, which I believe should count as two hits. Didn't matter because it didn't find its way back over the net anyways. It's 11-3, Chemex. Set from Kramer. Albright, miss hit. Point goes to the Chargers. Still an 11-4 lead for Midland. Albright trying to tip that one over. A veteran move instead of trying to go with the big hammer and kill. She's trying to tip that one over, unable to get enough power behind it. That one doesn't even get over the top of the net and falls back on the Chemex side. And the serve will not be able to make its way over from Laura Hershauer. As after her serve, she instantly leaves. Ellie Penn coming in. 12 to 4 lead for the Chemex. Albright with the serve. And Penn didn't mean to hit it that way, but it just flies towards the back. Kramer will set to Perry, who wasn't ready for that. Okoro, strong hit right at Ulrich. Penn will dig. The bump by Query, strong hit by Velasquez that lands in bounds. Velasquez, a huge senior leader for this Dow team. Another there, another one, another point for Dow from Velasquez, trying to get her team back in this game. And yet another service error for the Chargers, not doing themselves any favors here in this fourth set. This one looks a lot like the first set, Riley, as we saw. It's pretty even to start, but then the Chargers started shooting themselves in the foot, like you said earlier, making mistakes, making service errors, resulting in points for the Chemex, giving them a pretty sizable lead. Nice block in the front row. Francesca Query in on the action. Six to 13 now, Chargers trailing. 
Francesca will now serve. As stuffing herself in the net is Kramer. And Ulrich will bump it out. Chargers with a little bit of wiggle room. 13-7 now. Francesca Query will continue to serve. Dug out by Mo. Nice hit by Kramer and drilled to the floor by Velazquez. Lead down to five now for the Chemex. We saw the Chemex have a 13 to five lead, their biggest one of the set now. Dow on a three point swing here within five, within, re within re arm's reach of this fourth set. Tanish tried to pull a quick one, but was stuffed at the net. And the hit from Francesca Query goes out. So also sub out. As the libero for the Chargers comes back in, Ainsley Lacey. Ended a small 3-0 run for the Chargers, but that's the most traction they've been able to gain here in this fourth set. A strong hit to the back row from Velazquez. The set by Query. Tanis from the front row. Kept alive by the Chemex until Sanborn sends it into the net. Another great play by Tanis there. She had a pretty good swing on that one, sending it down a dig for the Chemex. And then she would have blocked that one if that one would have gone over the net. She had great placement on it, but nonetheless, Albright sends it into the net. Big dig by Karis Query. Goes over the net, and then the hit goes off the front row. Believe it bounced off of Alyssa Kepner. Right next to Tanis. It's now a six point lead for the Chemex. Big dig by Lacey. Tanis will softly send it over and then force it down. Into double digits now for the Chargers. Just a five point lead still for the Chemex. Velasquez will move back to serve. Nearly an ace, and it still is. Almost got down in the middle of the court. Great attempt by Sam Ulrich to dig it, but it just flies out of bounds. Velasquez will reset. Albright. Beats Query in the back row. Doing a good job of bending, but not breaking. Maintaining at least a five point lead. Sanborn with the serve. Query will bump it forward to Okoro, who tips it. And they'll say that Okoro made contact with the net and the point will go to the Chemex. And the first ref actually didn't see that net contact the first time he had given the point to Dow, but then the second ref down on our side said that Okoro made contact and the first ref on the stand had to change his point. Just a nasty putback. Edie Haas in the front row. It wasn't much that the Chargers could do about it. Just hung up there and Haas saw her moment and she took it. Yeah, you know, going into this timeout by Dow, no, no choice by CJ Blaha to take this. The Dow Chargers had kind of come back into this, this four set, but then making mistakes again like they did early. And nonetheless, they're down by seven here late in this four set, looking that the Chemex could force this one to five sets. 18-11 here in set number four. Chemex jumped out to an early lead, still maintaining it as the crowd maintains their energy. 
Jeff, there's no lack of it tonight. As both the teams break their huddles after a short timeout, Chargers really trying to give themselves a shock and get back into this fourth set. Served by Sanborn. Velasquez will have to send it over, and it goes out. Just have the Kimmick stick in this momentum swing. The Chargers hoping to take that timeout, able to make some game plans, have another few point swing go their way. But on that one, just takes the momentum right back to the Kimmick. And just like that, another point for the Chemex. A quick, quick two-point swing out of that timeout. Extends lead to nine, the biggest lead by the Chemex in this fourth set. Sanborn will continue to serve. Quick put back. Query will keep it up. Coro sends it over. The set to Albright. Great dig laying out was Lacey. Haas. Even if it stayed in bounds and didn't have that antenna, it still went too far. Point goes to the Chargers. Eight point lead for the Chemex, 20 to 12. Tannis back to serve. Carpenter sends it off from the right side. And the point will go to the Chemex, extending their lead. Coming down the home stretch here in the fourth set. Velasquez, strong hit. Dug out by Perry. Haas will send it back over. Okoro at the net, got it over, but Albright was able to keep it in the air. Set by Query, back to her sister Francesca, and she's blocked. Albright, strong in the front row. 10 point lead now for the Chemex. Big play by a big senior there in Maya Albright. Scoring points down the stretch when they really do need to win this to keep the match going. Albright will bump it to Perry who sends it over and keeps it in bounds. 11 point lead. That bench for the Chemex is absolutely crazy. The coach showing little to no emotion. He is a little bit older so he's not gonna get too excited but his team is making up for him. And they're very excited to be almost doubling up Dow in this fourth set. The set by Kramer, and she'll try to put it over. Luckily, Ocaro is here to save it, but it's sent out by Velazquez. One more point, and the Chemex will have set four. 24-12. Ocaro. And a quick set, saved by Perry, and put over. Francesca tries to put it down. Haas sends it into the net. But it's going to take a lot more than that for the Chargers to come back. Haas called for that one from Albright. She saw that she was going to be able to set it up. She vocalized to Albright that she wanted that one. Wasn't able to get that one over the net, resulting in a point for Dow, extending this set one more, at least one more serve. Kramer will set to Albright. The set, Okoro will send it out. Kemix takes set four, 25, 13. And Riley, that one ended kind of like the Chargers had played that whole entire fourth set. 
Yes, the Chemics had some great plays. They they had some great kills, some great blocks. But the Chargers shot themselves in the foot yet again, just like the first set when they fell. Okoro ended that set with a ball going too far outside and out of bounds. And that just was the epitome of what that fourth set was for the Chargers. And this is what it comes down to. Tied at two sets apiece. Coming down to the end. It's a big step for either team. Both student sections absolutely deserve it. Both teams have played pretty well. And the funny thing is, it's been so back and forth. First set, the Kemich took it 25-19. And then Dow comes back. It wins by 15 points. They take set two, 25-10. Then you look at set three, very close, 25-23. Dow able to take a 2-1 lead in the match. But then set four, dominated by Midland High, 25-13. Yeah, Riley, you're right. And I think this game has been a game of runs. I think if you look at it, it's the team that has gone on the most runs and each set has taken that set you know in that third set might not be the same because it was very very back and forth and then Dow ended up coming on top out of that third set but that first one we saw it was pretty even going up to the seventh or eighth point and then Midland went on a run in that second set was all Dow they went on the big run that put them up 13 to 1 they ended up winning and in that fourth set we saw Midland up by nine at one point. They ended up winning that one 25 to 13. The biggest lead of the set was by 12 with that win. And that's because they had the biggest runs and the least amount of errors by either team. Both teams breaking huddle. Getting to the floor. And trying to push each other just a little bit further here in set five. We mentioned how different each set has been in terms of the winner and the margin. This is what it comes down to. Both student sections just kind of staring each other down. Teams, on the other hand, getting ready to go to business. Music fading. Coaches finish their conversations. Each team has taken two of the first four sets. Back to start the serving for the Chargers. Karis Query, she sends it over. Set by Kramer. Perry will send it back, dug out by Lacey. Mo will send it forward. Query just has to send it over. Kramer with another set, and Perry is dug out by Query. Sanborn takes her turn this time. And that'll be blocked regardless of the dig attempts by Albright. It just goes out of bounds. It's an early 1-0 lead. Tannis sets it. And it goes straight into the net off the hit from Melissa Kepner. Ties it up at one apiece. Whoever wins. Sorry, serve. Riley, go ahead. The serve by Kramer gets over. Velasquez tries to find the back right corner. She puts too much on it. Velasquez there trying a very, very veteran move by Giants trying to tip that one over as we've seen some of that front line by both sides do tonight. But that one, she pushes it a little bit too hard and out of bounds resulting in the Midland lead. Bo sends it over. Kramer set to Perry. Velasquez from the middle sends it straight to Albright. And Kramer thought she was going to catch Velasquez off guard at that set over the net. But she thought wrong. Velasquez put it right back in her face. Very, very quick move by Kramer there. 
something only really veterans can do without coaches being too upset. But Velasquez was right there, ready to block that one, sends that one right back down to the floor, bites the Chemex in the butt on that one. She nearly gets an ace, but Tannis comes back with the block. They take a lead. They've already been tied twice, both at one, both at two. Now Chargers hop back out to a one-point lead. Velasquez will continue to serve. And there's an ace. Now without a little help from the net. Quick 3-0 run from the Chargers puts him up 4-2. And that time, the net is not the friend of Velasquez as it rockets back at her teammate Tannis in the front row. Catherine Perry to serve. Nice dig by Lacey. And Tannis nails it down, but they'll say out of bounds. Interesting call from up here. It looks like it was in. I have to respect the officials down there. They've been here all day throughout the freshman and JV matches. As that time it lands in from Tannis. And they retake the lead. Tannis came back with that one. She was pretty upset after the one. Uh, it didn't go her way the last point, but she comes back saying that can't stop her if you're not going to make the calls and she puts that one down to the floor, gives her team the 5-4 lead. It'll be a side out from Liv Carpenter. Two point lead now for the Chargers. Carpenter will send it over. Tannis there to bump it, the set to Okoro. Strong hit, but it finds its way to Perry in the back row. Coro again. Luckily, she stays alert enough to give it a second bump. Strong hit by Sanborn. And it sends it to the front row. Set from Kramer. Right side to Carpenter. Dug out by Kepner. Velasquez, strong hit. Great dig by Perry. Oh, still staying alive. Great decision by the libero, Sam Ulrich, to let it fly out of bounds. Very smart play there, Riley. As you saw, she really wanted to go and dig that one out. But then she just throws her hands up, hoping that one go out of bounds, and it just, just touches outside of the line. Coro. The dig by Query. Okoro touches it again. Strong hit by Velazquez and Albright can't push it back over. Beyond that one, Albright doesn't have the power to push that one back over. The strong hit by Velazquez sends that one straight down on the Chemex side. Albright couldn't do anything about it. Kepner will come out in to serve again as Laura Hershauer. Sends it over, but too strong. Just one point, 7-6. Chargers lead the Chemex. For all the marbles. Such a tight fifth set. Krawczak with the serve for the Chemex. He'll be set up in the middle of the court. Excuse me, that's Perry. Great dig by Penn. Set by Kramer. Perry comes charging again, and she's blocked. Francesca Query. 8-6, two-point lead. Very good positioning there by Francesca Query. She's the only one at that front net for the Chargers, and she puts herself right where she needs to be to send that one down on the Chemex side.
Laying out for it was Lacey. She couldn't get there. Keeps it within one. Back and forth. Somehow Chargers able to stop any sort of stretch that the Chemics are trying to go on and vice versa. It's almost a stalemate and a one point lead for the Chargers. Albright sends it over. The set by Query to Velazquez who hammers it. Haas sends it over and ties it up. Fourth tie so far in this fifth set. Query sisters there up front. Not the first time we've seen that tonight. But that one falls in between the two of them. Couldn't do anything about it. Now tied up here in the fifth set. Albright with the serve. Strong dig. It's a miscommunication. In the back row, Mo didn't think Penn was going to get her arms on it. Flies all the way back. And that's now a lead for the Chemics. It's the first lead they have since they were up 2-1 to one early in this set. And the Chemex fans went absolutely crazy when that one went off the hand of a Charger back, not the direction it needs to go. Velazquez charging, puts it down with some force. Tied again for the fifth time this set. First four sets. Dow took two, High took two. The serve from Francesca goes over. Perry charging, sends it over. Penn somehow deflects it with her fist. Perry, again, strong hit. Query tries to send it to the back row. Query will set to Tannis, who gets it down. Another lead for the Chargers. Lost it, but they didn't lose it long. Francesca Query back to serve. Strong, and that's an ace. 11-9 the lead for the Chargers. And that'll be a timeout for Midland High. Mistake there by Jillian Krawczak from the Chemex. A very, very hard hit ball sent across by the Chargers. Unable to collect that one and control it and just goes out into the corner. And then a huge point for Dow here. Now up two points in this fifth set. Whoever wins this one wins the match, Riley. And it's absolutely huge for bragging rights in this rivalry for the next year. It is big, and with a timeout taken by Midland High, if you're the Chargers, you have to try to keep that momentum going. And good timeout called by Tim Zerrell, but Chargers have to come out and keep playing strong because it hasn't been too much of a lead for them all night. Wherever they've gone, it seems like the Chemex have followed them, especially in this fifth set. Yeah, you're right, Riley. Like, the Chemex only had a couple leads here so far in this fifth set, but they're staying in it. So far in this match, it's been a game of runs. One team scoring a few points, other team not being able to put any, or they're coming back with their own runs. In this fifth set, these teams are very close, about halfway through this set so far. And Perry sends it to the floor to keep it at one point. Found a spot in the front row across the net to where she could squeeze it in. So the serve goes back to Midland. Edie Haas to send it away. Penn will just have to send it over. Set by Kramer to Perry in the middle of the court, and we're tied again. Six times in this fifth set. Knotted up at 11. Perry, another kill there. She has several on the evening. She leads this team in kills. The senior is leading the charge for the Chemex in this fifth set. 12-11. now. Coming out of that timeout, the Chemex shocked the Chargers. And the Chargers now have to take a timeout of their own. Yeah, three-point swing for the Chemex. Excuse me, four-point swing now up on top, 12 to 11. Coach C.J. Blaha and his 
his first season, his first year with this rivalry. I think his team has handled it very, very well behind the new coach. Very, very, a lot of chemistry for this Dow Chargers team after they fell behind in that first set, coming back with two set wins. They lost the fourth set, and they're staying in this fifth one. A lot of very, very back and forth, like I said last time out. And no team wants to lose this one, obviously, in one of the biggest rivalries in the state. And both teams look like they have a lot of intensities in their eye, as we can see from up here. A lot of smiles down there, having fun and getting ready to go to hopefully finish out this fifth set with a win for either team. Kids from across town here in Midland meeting at H.H. Dow High School as we're here in the fifth set. 12-11, Kemix lead the Chargers. I'm Riley Edwards alongside Jeff Roberts. Tannis, strong hit, but too strong. 13-11 now, the lead for the Chemex. The junior Tannis has been very, very aggressive all night. She does have a lot of points for the Chargers, but something like that you see several times. Some mistakes when you have such a big arm like Tannis and not very controllable, sends that one way out of bounds, resulting in a point for the Chemex. Sanborn will send it back over. Penn will bump the set by Query to Velazquez, who sends it out of bounds. And there'll be another timeout by the Chargers, and what a turn of events. It was 11-9 the lead going into the timeout by Midland High. Then, it was a 12-11 lead. Chargers take a timeout. Out of that timeout, it's a 3-0 run for the Chemex, and the Chargers forced to take another and really try to play it one, one serve at a time. I think there's a very, very smart timeout by coach C.J. Blaha. As I think he's seen that this has been a game of runs. The first four sets have really been decided by the team who was able to go on the most runs. And now the Chemex are going on these runs like they have all game long. And they're getting this three-point lead here in the middle of this fifth set. And I don't think C.J. Blaha wants the momentum to fall to the Chemex side. So he's trying to stop these runs by taking timeouts. And that, that Midland High School student section is really, really going crazy, trying to get make this like a home court advantage for them. The serve, the set, and Tannis rejected, but kept in the air. Penn will send it over. Kramer will bump Perry off the front row and to the back. Velasquez slowly puts it over. It's kept in the air. The set quickly by Query. Two points. 14-12, Kemmick still lead. Every charger on that side was fired up after that kill. The serve now by Query. Set by Kramer to the right side. Perry dug out beautifully by Moe in the back row. get down. Student sections erupting. Teams will shake hands. And that's it. It took five cents, but we found a winner. Chemex come out on top. But not without a lot of fight. 15-12, the final set goes. And it's been a wild one here from H.H. Dow. Wild is the best way to put that, Riley. As we saw that fifth set, the epitome of what this whole match had been like. It was a very, very even set going in the fifth or sixth point. Then we saw Dow take a lead, a few point lead there. And that one finished on a Chemic run. A couple, a, a three point swing timeout by the Chargers. Another three point swing timeout by the Chargers. They were able to put up one more point after that second timeout, but nonetheless, they fell in this one. They did, but not hard. There's some positives to take out of it. If either team would have lost this, there were some positives to take out of it. Got to give a lot of credit 
to Midland High, losing so many seniors last year, coming out in one of the biggest games that they think about every season and playing that strong with a lot of young players on the court. And I think Sammy Bay lost a lot of talent, isn't giving this team enough credit to how much, how well they've done this season, how well they've done it in this game. They've lost three, they've lost their seniors that, they've lost seniors that have gone on to play college athletics. And that's super, super important is when you have seniors lead your team that go on to the next level, that can really, really be important for this team the next year. And that it is, but we had a wild one tonight. We already said it was wild, very raucous environment from both teams bringing hundreds of students, I think you could say, really packing the stands here from H.H. Dow High School. Once again, I'm Riley Edwards, and he's Jeff Roberts. Thank you for watching tonight. Once again, Midland High comes out on top, three sets to two. Thank you for watching MCTV.